Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once again is in the home of my future shop. In the last two videos, we talked about the extension table on the ShopSmith Mark V, and we talked about the crosscut sliding sled from ShopSmith. And in talking about the alignment of the extension, uh, several people asked questions about floating tables. So in the mid 1980s, ShopSmith introduced the Mark V model 510 table system. And with that table system came improved dust collection, improved guards that actually work, a riving knife that stays tight against the blade no matter what depth of cut you're making, uh, T slots in the miter gauges that really improve things such as cross cutting, jigs fixtures, and the, and the like. And along with that came another interesting innovation known as a floating table. Floating tables allow us to add additions onto the main table as well as additions onto the extension table by means of tubes. You can see here on my uh, 520, I have an extension table added to the main table. You might think this is new, <laughs> not exactly. The people who own the 1960s version of the Mark 7 know that their extension table could also be added to their main table through some sockets in the bottom of the main table. Uh, really an interesting idea, a real frustration to get aligned though, because once you had that extension table adjusted on the end of the machine, you then had to align it to the main table, potentially throwing out those adjustments. Anyway, it was a really interesting idea to be able to have an adjustable table that moves with the main table. So you're moving the table up and down or you're tilting it or you're going to the drill press position. That extension table, if it was attached to the main table, stayed right in alignment. And so that was the idea behind adding floating tables to this system. Now, there's some limitations. And I mentioned in a previous video about how with the five, 10 floating tables, you don't ever wanna put the fence on the floating table. So in this video, we're gonna see the evolution of the floating table, and I'll show you exactly why I think that way. So let's start with 1985. Now, one important thing to understand is the main table of the Mark V 510 and later versions starts with a cast tabletop that gets milled. The surface is machined flat, T-slots are cut, etc. The extension table and the floating tables are not machined flat. Instead, they are sanded flat. So the finish of that is ever so slightly different. And one thing that does throw some people off is they'll throw their fence on their extension table and it will look like the fence isn't straight because it's not running necessarily parallel to these cast grooves at the top of the table. Well, they're not machined, therefore they may or may not be parallel exactly to the fence, which hopefully you've set parallel to your miter gauge slots. Here is a 1985 floating table. And one major difference in those early years is you'll see holes in the face of the main table tubes as well as the floating tables. Now, what are those holes for? Well, they've drilled holes all the way through to allow this to be bolted to the table. Later, as the product evolved, instead of drilling holes in the face and using separate bolts, Shopsmith perfected the method of uh, welding a threaded stud. So here you'll notice there are uh, nuts and washers holding this tube in place, where in the 1985 version, those bolts are threaded right into the aluminum table. Another big difference is if you notice this 1985 version, this locks onto the tubes using a very small knob that has a pair of crossing through holes that allow us to stick our Shopsmith toolbox in in order to get a little more torque or to loosen them. Eh, it didn't work so well. So Shopsmith eventually evolved into a large knurled knob that allows you to put just enough tension to hold it in place, not so much that you're gonna damage your tubes. When the 520 was introduced, they swapped out those steel tubes for aluminum extrusions. And you'll notice that that extrusion is different than that extrusion. The extrusion on the back of the table doesn't have to do nearly as much as the extrusion on the front, as this is the one where the fence is clamping. You can still use the same tubes to connect this to the main table, but the extrusions are different. Now, there was also a change in the very early days 
the extrusion was a, a, a thinner wall, ever so slightly different shape. I'm not sure, to be honest, which version I own of the 520 fence system, but it works just fine for me. So I've put a 510 extension table onto this machine so we can see the difference. Let me uh, prop this down and show you. So this tube accepts this inner tube and we can slide that into position and then we lock it in place by backing the knob out from the table against that inner tube. So you can imagine what's happening here. This tube being a smaller outside diameter than the inside diameter of the fence tube, you can see there's a bit of play. And as we tighten this, bringing the knob out, it is pinning this tube against the outside wall or the, the, <laughs> the inner wall of this tube. The same thing over on this side, and then let's add a floating table. So as a result of this connection here, with just a single point pushing against the sides, it's possible for us to get some sagging in this floating table. Now, if it's there just for supporting a crosscut, that's not a problem at all. Let's, let's bring this out to an extreme. We'll lock this in place. I'm lifting on it as I tighten just to give it the best shot. And let's, just for fun, we will recalibrate this. You know, floor is not necessarily level. And we'll just bring this over here. I don't know if you can see that, but we are 0.2 degrees off of level. Now, granted, that's not much. And again, that's not an issue whatsoever if what we're doing is using this as a catch table <laughs> to catch cross cuts as we're cutting off, what, four feet away from the blade. The bigger concern is this doesn't necessarily lock parallel to the main table. And the reason is, as you can see, if I, if I loosen these two, there's a little bit of side to side play here as well. And so as I tighten this one on this end and then come over here and tighten this one on this end, there's no guarantee that this tube is perfectly parallel to this tube, which should be parallel to the tubes on the main table. So as a result, Shopsmith has always advised not to put your fence on the floating table of the Model 510. So how is the 520 different? Well, first off, if we slide this tube in, you'll notice that when I tighten this knob here on the front, it's going to lift that tube tight into that extrusion. And that extrusion has a bit of a radius to it that matches that tube. So instead of pulling that tube away from the table, it's pulling that tube up against this extrusion. So let's bring that forward. I'm going to go ahead, in this case, just lock it in place with both knobs because I'm using my fence just a little bit off of the main table. And this floating table is now already resting on the tube. And then as I tighten it, I'm just locking it in place. So everything is already resting nice and parallel to this tube, which is parallel to the main table. So with the fence locked in place, we should now be able to take our miter gauge with a quarter inch dowel, or in my case, a piece of key stock. And as we were checking the fence before on the main table with it running parallel to the miter slot, I should be able to touch that, locking this in place, touch that to the fence, and I should be able to draw this along the fence and it should be parallel. And it is something I never could do confidently when using the fence on a floating table on the 510. So how can I replicate that kind of cut, that kind of wide rip with a 510 model Mark V? Well, it's the same way we always did it with a model 500. You add your fence to your extension table and then just change the distance between the main table and the headstock and your fence. I'm going to do this with this floating table on here, but you'll get the idea. I'm just going to loosen the carriage, loosen the headstock, and I'll slide those closer together until I get the distance that I need. Now, the disadvantage of this is if I have a Model 510, 
if I have to slide the headstock away from the joiner in order to get the proper distance from the fence, I'm no longer powering my joiner. So that's a huge advantage to the 520 table system and fence because I can leave everything plugged in the joiner and put my fence anywhere from the main table to a floating table to an extension table to even a floating table off of the extension table. Now, additionally, with the 510 and the 520, you got a couple legs. Now, this is, again, two different generations of legs. You can see the early ones had uh, two set screws that could be locked in place. This one has, the modern version, has a single set screw. They work just fine. They're really there just to support any weight that is leaning on those extension tables, again, as you make a cutoff. But we can do some other cool things with these that may not be obvious. Let me show you one of my favorite things to do with the floating tables and these tubes. Now, as you're looking at that, you might say to yourself, self, that doesn't make a lot of sense. I mean, there's a hole right here. Um, I can't put the fence over here or over here. I can't put a floating table over here. Well, for some widths of rips that you're doing, if the fence is on the main table, this can be a very quick rear support. Now, again, there's a hole in the middle of this. Well, you fill the hole in. Um, we'll have to do this in another video because I, this one's not prepared to do this. Uh, there's a, a quick little modification that we make, but it's very straightforward, simple, and it's supported with just one leg clamped roughly dead center on the, uh, the trunnion of the main table. And the reason we do that is I can tilt my table now at any point and that table's gonna follow. Now, if you don't wanna go to that trouble, if you don't wanna mess around with this, I'm gonna show you in another video how easy it is to fill that center and it makes a huge rear support table. But there is a quick way of doing this right off the bat with the tools that you already have in hand. Um, and let me reconfigure this. So I'm gonna use a mix of 520 and 510 parts for this, because. I'm gonna just use this for rear support. But you'll notice that on the extension table, these tubes that support it on your machine are off center. Normally the long side is facing forward. I'm gonna install this with it backwards with the long side facing the back. And I'm gonna lock this in place. Roughly at the same height of the main table. And then into that, I'm going to install my extension table and add my support leg. So now you can see with that simple addition, I now have support right off the back of the main table. It is there just to catch. If you want to align that, put a straight edge across, you can do that and adjust the height of your leg. I have that back leg down just a little bit. That's okay. It's just there to catch. Okay, now for a moment of transparency. How often do I do this? Almost never. It just isn't necessary for me because of the work that I'm doing. Uh, you've seen this extension fence with the support lip on it. Uh, it works great for so much ripping that I'm doing working with solid stock. But, uh, you know, again, <laughs> this is an accessory that came with your Mark V, 510, 520. So it's there in your toolbox if you want to use it. Another point of reference that might be worth considering, if you have a Mark V model 500, this is your extension. You have one extension table in your main table. This is how you support your stock and support your fence. This is the extension on the 510 and 520. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's dramatically larger. Now they did, Shopsmith did at one point, again, I think it was in the 80s, they came out with a wider extension table. Um, I think it goes out to about six inches. I think this one's about four. And uh, you could upgrade that tabletop to get yourself a few more inches of support. But man, there ain't nothing like a 510 or 520 table for support. I so look forward to your questions, comments, cheap shots. We'll circle back around and answer those in the next video. Uh, if you like this video, of course, hit the thumbs up. If you dislike the video, hit the thumbs down button and show YouTube how much you really dislike it. Hit it twice. Make a great day.